Let us share in the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord. Who forgives our iniquity. Who renews our strength like the eagles. Let us sing hymn number 731, My Country Tis of Thee. be seated. You notice that when this was written, they've shifted from the King of England, of Great Britain, I should say, to God, who is the King. Our prayer of confession is written in the bulletin. Let us pray. O oh God, you led people to this land and out of conflict created in us a love of peace and liberty. We have failed you by neglecting to live your sort of freedom. Forgive pride that overlooks national wrong or justifies injustice. Forgive divisions caused by prejudice or greed. Have mercy, O oh God, on the heart of this land. Make us compassionate, fair, and helpful to each other. Raise in us a right sense of freedom that sees and seeks humanity's good. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
For freedom, we have been set free from, by God. Friends, believe the good news. Let us sing the doxology. be seated. Ava John will be sharing with us in German. Are you with me? You are with me. You are with me. <laughs> ah, that's much different. know you run into people on the street but you never know they're carrying these gifts around with them that they have not just singing i mean chainsaws too but <laughs> <laughs> beautiful let us pray oh god we ask that you would uh, help us to be aware of other people around us, of our connection to them, even if we don't even know them. We ask that you will shed light on what we do here this morning and who we are here this morning so that we will become 
truly free. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, the scripture isn't what's in there. <laughs> because that's last week's scripture. But the first one is John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So, if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And the second reading, ah, oh, for some reason I didn't see that. It is Galatians. <laughs> exactly what it says, only I'm doing Galatians second. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, and verses 13 to 26. Listen for God's word to you. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Live by the Spirit, I say. No, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh, for what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. To prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, also listed in, translated in some versions as party spirit, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. 
let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Here ends this reading of God's word for us. And may the Lord bless into our hearts and our lives the living of it. Freedom. We sang a hymn about freedom. We read some scriptures about freedom. We're going to sing another hymn about freedom. But you know freedom is a hard concept to get our minds around because it comes in so many different brands. The founders of our country thought of it as freedom from lords and ladies, dukes and duchesses, kings and queens. They thought of a government formed and influenced by the people themselves. A government, as Lincoln later stated, of the people, by the people, and for the people. When we said we were free, we meant we participated in a government which we the people had elected those who govern. We were free and we had a government which guaranteed those freedoms. We have a democracy, the land of the free. That's one version of freedom. It's what you do with it in this case. Freedom sometimes means being able to do anything I want. A child might think, well, I'm sure many children and teenagers have thought, boy, I can't wait to grow up when I can do anything I want. I can go to bed when I want. I won't have any curfews. I can make my own rules. Life will be wonderful. I'll be free. Ha. <laughs> of course, once we become adults, we discover a different picture. An adult is often free to make different choices. But those choices come with consequences and responsibilities. Once choices are made, they restrict other choices. For instance, deciding to become married comes with cutting off a lot of other choices. Having children cuts off a lot of other choices. There's things we could have done that we can't do. So we are constantly making choices, but when we make those choices, we narrow our field and cut off other choices. We make our own curfews in a sense because some of us decide that going to bed the night before sure helps a lot with the next day. Now sometimes we say that to ourselves and still stay up anyway and end up very tired and we need to go to bed a little earlier maybe the next night. You're adults. You know how you do that. Yet, even with those restrictions, we consider ourselves free. Free. Sometimes we think of freedom in a particular way. Freedom from want. Freedom from poverty. Freedom from discrimination. Some simply want the freedom to do whatever they want, wherever they want, whenever we want, whenever they want, or we want. I would call that license, not freedom. And a lot of times you have to be powerful enough or rich enough to even be able to think about doing that. So what was Jesus talking about when he said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Remember the response was, while we've always been free, we are children of Abraham, we haven't been slaves to anyone. Now remember that. Who are they slaves to? And Paul writes, 
for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. They were referring to real freedom that they believed was real freedom found in the gospel. The scripture is calling us to rethink some of our assumptions, this whole thing about freedom. We often think of Jesus as somehow superhuman when in fact Jesus is the only true human. Because he was who he was. Instead of thinking of ourselves as human and Jesus as more than human, we need to think of ourselves as less than human. The humans we were made to be and Jesus as human. The one who shows us what it means to be human. When we become who we were meant to be, and not our fallen nature, we are truly free. We are set free. The ones that the children of Abraham were slaves to were themselves. They were slaves to their own desires, ways of looking at things, ways of being. They didn't even think of that. And a lot of times when we think about freedom, we don't even think about that. We become free from ourselves, and in that we become our true selves. Now this is difficult. It's difficult. But it's true freedom. Sometimes we feel ill at ease, you know, like a square peg in a round hole. And many times that is the real you yearning to be free. Now, I'm not talking about outside circumstances. I'm talking about an inward you that's trying to be born. That's why you have the language to be born again. But nevertheless, it's still a process. It's not bang, immediate. What is standing in the way of our freedom? Jesus says, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son, S-O-N, makes you free, you will be free indeed. It is a sort of freedom in all circumstances, a freedom in all circumstances. When Paul writes, do not submit again to a yoke of slavery, the slavery he is referring to is sin, slavery to sin, to our fallen nature, doing things that maybe we don't really want to do and we know we shouldn't be doing or things we should have done that we haven't done. Only do not use your freedom, write Paul, as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love, and here's an interesting twist on freedom, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's being set free when you become connected. Now that's, again, a difficult thing to think about because it opposes many of our ideas of what freedom is. True freedom is being connected to others. As we said last Sunday, God made a world that was interconnected and human beings were made to take care of each other and take care of God's good creation. And by the way, we're part of that creation. God, it turns out, is a relational God, a loving God. If you're a loving God, you have to be relational. 
a part of what it means to be made in the image of God is that we're able to have a relationship with God and God is able to have a relationship with us. It is no wonder that God made a relational world and made human beings capable of caring for each other and for an interdependent creation. Often we think of freedom as being rid of all this, these obligations or these chains that we might refer, uh, call them. You know, think about this, even God, by creating, became connected. God became connected. In that is freedom. That's how it was meant to be. But sin, which is our old lifestyle, is everything which causes a brokenness between us and God and between us and other people and between us and creation and even within ourselves. So that's why we talk about and hopefully do, forgiveness, which kind of recreates us, starts us over again. Healing, renewal, and why we need the loving support of sisters and brothers in Christ to support us in that growing. Back and forth, each other, all the time. It's why we come to church every week or at least try to find ways of reminding ourselves who we really are when we've blown it. When John Calvin came to Geneva, the Reformation had already been there and it had led in a very sad direction. They felt free from rather than free for. They felt free to do anything they wanted. After all, grace was free, right? These people were called libertines. They were, in Paul's words, gratifying the desires of the flesh. They were enslaved to sin, even though they did not think about it that way. They weren't free at all. They weren't thinking through what was going on at all. And so John Calvin was asked to fix the situation. And so that's why he stayed. So from scripture, Calvin began to mold a new understanding of freedom. Freedom that did not mean license. Freedom that meant a new freedom in Jesus Christ from ourselves. Through the cross, through the resurrection, through grace, through the life of Jesus Christ, they had and we have been set free from enslavement to sin. We have a new role model, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And Paul writes about this struggle in Romans 7. He writes this. And I'm glad Paul writes this because it helps us to question Paul at certain points. <laughs> but here is what Paul writes. But I am of the flesh, sold into slavery under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I, do not, if, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I do not the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. So I find it a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin 
enslaved to sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from the body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. An example, but also the readiness to give us a start over, a start over, a start over. Reminds me of a cartoon, Pearls Before Swine. I don't know if any of you watch that, look at that, but it's got rat and pig and goat and lots of other characters. But the last one was, rat says to goat, I'm sorry for what I did to you. And the goat says, and that means you will not do it again. And rat says, I most certainly will. And Pig says, isn't his honesty refreshing? <laughs> God has redeemed Paul, and Paul knows it, and he still struggles over and over again. Is it any wonder that the Westminster divines in the very first answer in the shorter catechism wrote, our chief end as humans is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. The way God is often presented as by we Christians is it's more endure him forever. But no, they said to enjoy him forever. We got that all twisted up too. Paul writes, for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and we might add to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our heart, uh, all our soul. Paul lists for us obvious works of the flesh, and since they're so obvious, I won't go over them. But we know very well what they are, and we could add to the list. But more importantly, he gives us the list of the fruits of the Spirit. And these are the signs of freedom. These are the signs of freedom. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Can you do that? Then you're free. Joy, peace, patience, Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22, 23, if you want to stick them on your refrigerator. Now, however, that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and beggarly elemental spirits? How can you want to be enslaved to them again? You don't even want to do this anymore. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Amen. Our hymn is Go Down Moses, 618. <laughs>
By the way, I love that extra singing in there. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let us pray. Dear God, we are called to be your people and often like those children out in the wilderness, we decide to go after our own desires, our own things, our own needs, and we forget those around us and who we are called to be and what we are called to do. And we need to be cleansed again and again. But help us, Lord, that when, once again, we are made new, once again we are, so to speak, baptized. Help us to have the strength and the insight to do and be what your love means for each of us as individuals together. We ask that you would help us blend the gifts that we have so that we might stand as a people who represent what it means to be a new people in the midst of an old world. Keep us from acting just like everything else. Keep us from slavery to sin so we just look like the old world. And help us to be a place where people are welcome, where they can feel nurtured, where they can use the gifts you have given them, where they can become who you made them to be. Lord, help us to love one another. Help us to be committed to one another. Help us to help, help us to make life become what you intended life to be and help us to enjoy you forever. Through Jesus Christ who taught us as we pray to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Number 621, for the healing of the nations, we will stand and sing this hymn.
and the mercy and the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and with your loved ones far and near, both now and forevermore. Amen. Now, be free, okay? Go and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.